You may or may not have heard of NVIDIA's rumored GTX 2070 based on their Volta architecture, which I am very excited for, as well as AMD Vega, but I don't have any AMD cards, so I can't really calculate or predict their FPS performance. But with the GTX 2070, that is a different case because I have the 770, 970, and the 1070. And I know these aren't exact direct comparisons between each other, but this is what NVIDIA has gauged as their mid-tier card for the last three generations. So we're going to compare those and make a future comparison on what the possible FPS performance could be for the GTX 2070. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion tech reviews, unboxings and setup design. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. And today we are talking about the GTX 2070 as I have not said it enough already. So I'm going to refer to my video a couple months back. If you haven't seen it yet, I'd recommend watching this before you watch this video in case you want to understand the full synopsis of what I'm talking about here. The video will be in the link in the card and the description below. Anyways, I calculated that there was a 43% jump in overall performance between the 770 and the 970, and a 47% jump in performance from the 970 to the 1070. Now that overall performance includes FPS performance, thermal efficiency, and power efficiency, but for the sake of this video, we're going to focus on just what the FPS performance is. I divided it up between five games, GTA 5, Forza Horizon 3, Battlefield 1, Doom, and Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Now here's the FPS performance comparisons between the three cards. You can see that both comparisons are fairly different from each other. For instance, in GTA 5 there was a 69% increase in FPS between the 1070 and the 970, whereas the 970 had a 11% increase over the 770. 69% and 11% are nowhere close to each other. I believe the reason for these jumps in performance being inconsistent is due to the fact of the amount of VRAM available on the GPU and also slower clock speeds, of course. The GTX 770 I was testing with had two gigabytes of VRAM, which was a very limiting factor in some games, and also the clock speed was not much of a jump from the 770 to the 970 when compared to the 1070 and the 970. Now I am aware that there is a four gigabyte version of the GTX 770, but the only one I have available for me is the two gigabyte version. Now I'm going to have to assume here, and I don't like assuming, but I personally believe the performance increase in average FPS for these games is going to represent more closely to that of the 970 and the 1070. There are a lot of unknown factors here though. How many cores will the 2070 have, or how much VRAM, clock speed, bus width, VRAM type, etc. So I am going to assume that the jump in performance will closely represent the jump from the 970 to the 1070. Now keep in mind guys, these are my findings and my assumptions and these are the best predictions I can make to the best of my knowledge. So hopefully you can find these predictions somewhat respectable. Anyways, let's look at the benchmarks for the increase in performance of average FPS between the 970 and the 1070 and using that same performance increase and we're gonna use that to calculate what the 2070 will be in 1080p gaming. Now keep in mind, this is all 1080p gaming with one 1440p benchmark from Unigen Heaven. That's the only 1440p benchmark that I have available to me because I did not test these cards for 1440p since the 770 and the 970 were nowhere close in the performance of the 1070 when it came to 1440p gaming. Now, based on my findings, the GTX 2070 will most likely be very well capable of handling 1440p gaming, so we can somewhat gauge what that performance will be like just looking at the numbers from the 1080p gaming. And also, the 4790K has one of the best single core performances among almost any chip out there today. Let's look at these benchmarks.
So we can see that most games are going to be a cakewalk for the GTX 2070 at 1080p max settings. Now, unfortunately, I do not have higher resolution benchmarks simply because this type of testing is incredibly time consuming and a lot of people still play at 1080p. But if the actual numbers are anywhere close to these, then this GPU won't have much trouble at all with 1440p and possibly some 4K gaming. The only game that really challenges this GPU at 1080p is Forza Horizon 3. That game is incredibly strenuous on the GPU. GPU and uses a lot of VRAM. Now moving on from the gaming benchmarks, I'm going to move on to show more of the synthetic GPU benchmarks and make the final comparison to the GTX 2070. The synthetic benchmarks have a lot closer performance increase between the three GPUs, so this will make it a lot more reliable for the data. Wow, and those are some hefty numbers for the synthetic benchmarks, especially for scoring above 10,000 in Time Spy. To put that in reference, the GTX 1080 Ti Time Spy score is currently around 9,502 to 9,815. So if my predictions are somewhat close to the actual performance in this card, it would be an absolute monster. So this isn't really meant to be 100% accurate. This is more just for speculating and having fun, seeing where this mid-tier card could be within the next generation of the 70 series for Nvidia. Seeing these numbers can prove that this may be a very 4K capable card, which is really exciting, especially for a more budget-friendly price than the 1080 Ti. So I hope you all enjoyed the video and found my analysis respectable. There is a lot more depth to dive into and I wanted to keep this video as surface level as possible without sacrificing credibility. Hopefully you can find that within this video and I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Remember if you want to see more videos like this you can check more out on the rest of the channel and then consider subscribing if you want to become part of this tech junkie family.